Okay, short person check. Okay, let's hit it, Steve. Take a moment and stop. I know what you're thinking. I'm here to talk about the other P word. If yours is working, be thankful. In 2001, my eldest son was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. I did my first century ride in 2007 to fundraise for the Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. We call it JDRF. And I was amazed I survived my first 106 miles on a bike. It was an intense experience. And almost 20 years later, I continue to volunteer for JDRF and serve as an advocacy team chair for Montana, a research and clinical trial volunteer for the Pacific Northwest, and I still coach and ride Rides for the Cure across the USA. The difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes is always confusing to people. With type 1, you lose the ability to produce insulin due to an autoimmune attack on your beta cells. Type 2 diabetics produce insulin, but insulin resistance prevents cells from using it efficiently, causing high blood sugars. Let's start at the very beginning, a very good place to start. When you sing, you begin with do, re, mi, and no, I cannot sing like Julie Andrews or Richie Boyd. And I promised my children I would never, ever sing in public. We've come a long way, baby, since Canadian surgeon Sir Richard, for Frederick Banting isolated insulin from a dog's pancreas in 1921. This led to the first patient being treated with insulin. Progress yet, but this is not a cure. Insulin is a hormone produced by pancreatic beta cells. It allows glucose to move out of your bloodstream and into your cells for energy. Without insulin, your cells simply starve for fuel. Today, we have many types of insulin with different onsets, peaks, and durations. I'm going to focus on rapid-acting insulin because, as you can see from this chart, it gets complicated. Diabetics that use insulin pumps use only rapid-acting insulin delivered subcutaneously into the skin. The onset is within 15 minutes, the peak is from one to two hours, and the duration is three to four hours. Apologize, this is an older slide. There are newer and f other uh, insulin pumps out now than ones in this picture. The liver stores glucose as glycogen and secretes glucose steadily in the bloodstream for cellular fuel. Insulin pumps deliver a steady small dose of basal insulin to cover the glucose secreted by your liver. This is extremely difficult to accomplish. Basal insulin supports your heart, brain, lungs, and digestive system. Bolus insulin doses control blood sugar increases after eating meals. You have to consider the carb amount, blood sugar at the time of a meal, insulin on board in your system, and activity planned to determine the bolus amount. Easy, right? So all a type 1 diabetic has to do is adapt insulin doses to all aspects of daily life. Diet, exercise, stress, etc. 24-7, 365 days a year with no days off. Piece of cake. <laughs> Eating food raises your blood sugar. You need to match the insulin dose to the carbohydrates you eat. No problem. Can you count the carbs in these photos? When I look at this photo, all I see are lots of carbs and lots of gluten. Yes, there's so much gluten. But if you have a stressful day at work or a big exam in school, all that carb counting and insulin dosing can get thrown out the window by your hormones and wreak havoc on your blood sugar level. Oy vey. Now let's talk about exercise. You only need to consider what time you ate, 
what you ate, and how much insulin on board in your system to prevent a low blood sugar during exercise. And to complicate things even more, some types of exercise raise your blood sugar. Managing type 1 diabetes is not for wimps, but there is hope. JDRF supports research that brings products to the market to improve lives and create a path to a cure for type 1 diabetes. Mary Tyler Moore lived with type 1 and was a passionate advocate for research. JDRF works with the FDA, health insurance companies, and Medicare to speed up approval and coverage for new devices and technology. What's the point of technology if no one can access it? JDRF worked to ensure coverage of continuous glucose monitors and artificial pancreas systems. JDRF supported research and advanced approval by the FDA of the first drug to delay onset of type 1 diabetes called teplizumab or t in 2022. This is the biggest paradigm shift in treating type 1 since insulin was discovered. JDRF advocates with Congress for affordable insulin, but we are not waiting for Congress or pharma to change the drug pricing system. We have partnered with Civica to bring $35 insulin for all of the market in 2024. <laughs> if you know someone living with type 1 diabetes or would like to know more about advocacy, screening for type 1, research or clinical trials in the Pacific Northwest, please email me. Thank you. <laughs>